Hi. Okay, so firstly, it's really scary up here. Uh, so hello to everyone out there and everyone who's joining us online. Uh, so yeah, I'm Sam Clark, and uh, I'm from the Disruptive Media Learning Lab in Coventry University. Uh, so when I say that, people usually ask me, what do I do? Okay. And I, you know, in the spirit of this talk, I'm going to refer to myself as the Chimera, uh, which is the three-headed beast, although I think I'm more of a four-headed beast. Um, and that's because I'm a researcher, uh, I, I do a bit of teaching, and I also make things as well uh, at work. But I'm also a mother, and I take a lot of inspiration from my, from my little beasts as well. So I'm just going to put my teaching head on for a second. And one of the issues that uh, we always have is this, this thing around self-reflection. Um, so I teach second year undergrads, and they don't know even what self-reflection means. So I, I had a student ask me, well, what do you mean by this? And it's really hard. So uh, to be a second year undergrad and not know how important that this practice is for furthering um, your own learning development, I think is a, a real big issue. Um, and also when I look at, when I've, I've been asked to self-reflect, it's really dry and hard work. So it's something that, you know, it was it's quite a big, big issue. Okay, and I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey about my, uh, I've been a bit disillusioned with technology threw all my hands up in the air and went, ah, I'm going back to paper-based paper stuff. So my primary uh, background is in serious games, game-based learning, gamification, and that side. And I am a massive geek. So I, at home, I play Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which has anyone played before? Yeah? OK, does anyone not know what it is at all? OK, that's good. But for the benefit of anyone at home, it's a tabletop role-playing game where you move, you create a character, you move um, around and you tackle problems. Um, and so I'd been faced with this problem at work and one evening I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. And actually I just wanted to show because I'm not playing tonight because I'm here, which leads my group to be very angry at me. And I said, well, I'm actually quite scared of talking here. And the response was, uh, You'll be fine. Just imagine them all as kobolds getting incinerated. So there we go. You are kobolds now. OK. So I was playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And then I was looking down at this character sheet, which is, is kind of what makes up your character. You're asked to kind of build your character around a set of attributes. And one of the things that just jumped out at me all of a sudden was this idea of, I could, I could use this, I could get them to reflect on these strengths and weaknesses that they have, but in maybe a little bit more of an interesting way, something that might reach out to them. And of course, then I was looking at the monster manual, and I was thinking, oh, monsters, beasts, oh, all of those issues that we're faced with, maybe we can turn th this into um, a way that they can, they can identify the, the problems that they're having, but turn them into beasts and, and actually look at what is the best way that they can combat them. And then because I'm mental and I try and do everything all at once, uh, I went away and tried to do that, just that, I tried to solve everything all at once. Um, and as you can see from, from this, this was kind of a, a weird paper. I'm going to try and get them to do teamwork and, and you know, they were going to set goals and they were define, define their epic quest and lots and lots of different things all in one thing. Um, but came up with some, some resources for this paper-based version, which was the character sheets and the attributes had been kind of changed to reflect things like, you know, motivation and uh, collaboration. And so where did they kind of rank themselves on these different, um, these areas? And then I built these, um, monsters taken from Creative Commons images, uh, where I just I just cut up a load of them and then got them to pick one that they thought represented them that week, that issue that they were having, and then they would reflect on that in a paper-based journal. And so we did um, 
some research, so we kind of asked them what they thought about that. So it went through ethics and we did some focus group interviews. And, and just as I had suspected, I tried to do too many things. And it's not that they weren't good because the, the responses that were coming out of it was that they liked all of the stuff, but it wasn't supported enough in each of the different areas. So I tried to, to focus down a little bit about, okay, well, what is this? What is it that they, were, they really liked? And they really liked the monsters. So they thought it was creative. So they, they really liked that, that idea of being able to, to build monsters around these issues that they were having and then to reflect on how they could combat them. But the problem was, was that what they were saying was that it was creative, but not creative enough. And that's the problem. I'd kind of put my creativity into it, but it was limited um, because there was only so much that I could do. And actually, that, that autonomy was not coming from them. They didn't have that, uh, that full scale. Well, actually, and, and one of the comments was, well, maybe none of those monsters reflect how I'm feeling at the moment. I'd like to build my own. Um, and I was, I was feeling, right, OK, oh, that, that's, that's a big challenge. How do you do that? Um, and the other comment that they wanted was that they wanted it to be online. So this was a, a really, really big thing, is that they wanted to have this practice um, of, of sharing in, in this online space that they could access any time, that they weren't going to lose bits of paper and things like that. Um, and I'm a, I'm a fan of rapid prototyping. Uh, because I've spent so long in the past designing serious games, digital serious games, which just takes so much time and energy and money, and then at the end are not used because we've moved on. You know, it's not fit for purpose anymore. Um, and one of the really great things about working in a multidisciplinary lab is that there are loads of people doing really interesting things. And um, one of the, the the areas that some of my colleagues are working in is open education and uh, introduced me to some really great people who are doing awesome things. Uh, and that's Adam Levine, I hope I said that right, and Brian Lamb. And uh, they're kind of, you know, we're working quite closely and they've done these really amazing things about giving more power back to educators and um, students about the, the work that taking control of what they, they make. And they, they've made these SPLOTs, which stands for Smallest Possible Online Learning Tool, which I think is great. It's a really cool name. Um, and they, so we had this discussion about how we could maybe merge some of this, you know, this disciplinary stuff into, into something, combat, combating this problem that I was having. And um, so it was suggested that maybe this true collector um, theme that is a splot could be useful. Um, and I was looking at this and I was thinking, oh, actually, that kind of looks like the monster manual, just an online version. It's got a collection. We can, we can use that to put all of the beasties in. But I had a bit of a, an issue with, at first, the fact that it's anonymous, because that scares me for a multiple, multiple reasons. Um, Mainly because I initially wanted to, to use it as a, a way to log in and for, for myself to track what people were doing. And also there's this, this whole conversation about duty of care um, and usually anonymous voices on the internet. Well, it's, it's, it opens up a lot of issues. But I tried to look at this from another way, especially trying to touch on some of the stuff that was being said earlier about actually giving a voice to those people who are, are, you know, who are not heard, because it's those ones that shout loudest in, in the class that I know they're, they're not doing well or you, they want this stuff, but what about the people who are actually suffering in silence? And that power of um, being anonymous online, I think actually what I would like to do is try and turn this into a power of good. So that one of the other issues that I have with my students is that they all hate each other. Um, they all come from, again, multidisciplines because I only have them for 11 weeks. It's an 11 week course um, and it's mostly based on vocational skills and things like that. They don't like working with each other and there is a real sense of competition 
and I've, I've, I've seen this more and more now. Um, and what I wanted to try and do is kind of grow this power of empathy and actually, well, do you realize what else is happening with the, you know, your, your fellow students in class? I mean, you, you might look at them and, and take a stab at them for, I don't know, being late or whatever, but no one really knows what else is going on uh, behind closed doors. And uh, you know, I have some students, or I had some students who, um, we got all the way through the 11 weeks and then the final week they said, I couldn't make it to class because of X, Y, and Z. And if they had come to me before that, I could have helped them, because it, but it was so late at that time, couldn't help them at all. And I wonder if partly it's that because there's no conversation, or they, they don't want to have that conversation face to face. So maybe this anonymous um, way of collecting issues was, could actually be used for, you know, can actually be used to identify those most in need at an earlier stage. So it kind of looks like this at the moment um, in its new iteration and because we do just test and then rebuild, so we'll see. Uh, I'm going to use this um, as part of a study now coming September, end of September with some um, so not just my class, but also some students from the University of South Wales, hopefully, um, University of Salford, and again, any of you are more than welcome to, uh, to help. I would be most grateful, actually, if you have students. Um, and I'm going to just go through the tool a little bit and, and show it anyway and what it does. Uh, Okay. So kind of building on the idea of this is now the new monster manual. Uh, as you can see, the glaring fish biscuit eater, which is the animated GIF, is a bit jarring, but you know. Uh, but what it is essentially is that people can post their, their issues in here, and as, but they're asked to reflect on them as, um, as interesting creative beasts. And let's bring this up. And they can either get the images from Creative Commons or they can draw their own, upload that, that's no problem. But what I'm asking them to do is reflect on what it is, what, what is causing this issue, but also to identify how to potentially combat that as a thing. So, like I said, it is anonymous. They can put a character name or, uh, you know, they can use their real name if they want to, but it's, it's not... Um, Required, but the other the other nice thing is that you can comment directly back on on it, and again in an anonymous form if you like, um, and and then offer advice directly to them. There is a way that they can when we build a beast that they can ask for direct contact between you and uh, so you can actually pick up if there is someone who's really struggling and needs direct contact, you can do that as well. Um, but they're, they're also asked to uh, tag their beast about what, you know, what is the, what, is it, is it a, a confidence issue? And if you clicked on that, there's none in there at the moment, but, uh, you know, there's well-being, so there's a couple in well-being. Um, and actually, I think a part of this tool, so I'll be using it to, to, to look at students on the, um, how they're dealing with the course. But I know some of my colleagues and other universities are going to use it for the more pastoral care. So looking at that well-being side, which is massively important and a growing conversation that I think that we need to kind of address. Um, and I'm just going to, so it's got all of the reasoning why behind it. But I'm going to create a beastie. And I'm going to invite you to create a, your own beastie as well, if you want to. Um, and I was thinking about this last night, and true to, uh, I think, the, the conference, I'm going to call it the Imp Oster. Uh, I'm going to not select an image, but let's get one from Creative Commons.
And I found one last night, so I hope they don't mind me messing with this. Oh, they're different ones. Okay, we're going to use this one. But if you just do a search for bothersome and beasties, it will come up anyway. Ah, thank you. On uh, online. So I'm not going to do that because I'm going to take too much time doing that. But basically, um, you can put the title. You can upload your um, your image there. You can set yourself as anonymous if you want. You describe your beastie. Um, and how you would combat that. You can enter sort of where you got your image from because obviously it's really important and the license if it's under Creative Commons. You can check what that, that beastie represents. So it's really easy then to um, just pull up a list of all of those um, different ones. So maybe it's in confidence uh, and we've given them a create your own as well, which is great. Um, and then you can tag your beast as well. So we're using this to track different cohorts and universities using this tool. So if, um, so if the University of South Wales is going to what, use it for putting loads of beasts in, then they, they're going to use their own tag. And it means that when you're back then here, you can just click on that and it will bring up all of the, the beasts associated to, to your own course. So, in short, um, this is, so this is open for everyone to use. I'm happy for anyone to use this. Um, or, you know, the, the template and do your own thing. You know, if you want to create pesky pix, pix, pixies or whatever, that's, you know, it's fine. Um, and also the, the fact that this, this whole looking at this open technology in this way is, has really kind of given me a little bit more of a love of it because I was very, very um, just, like I said, disillusioned with the time, the resource, the, you know, the, the effort that takes to create something. But actually, I think you can create something really simple. And this kind of cross-disciplinary stuff um, has really helped my own practice and understanding. And I hope it gives a voice now to the students who are feeling like we're kind of leaving them behind, I don't know, potentially. But that's it, I think. <laughs>
I'm John Wilson, I'm the CEO at Agenta. We're a technology company that focuses on education and learning. We build, manage and operate platforms for education, for video collaboration. Externally we prefer to work with what we feel as ethical industries. Um, obviously education, teaching, learning, healthcare. We feel that we can really contribute to these industries by creating exciting platforms, um, easy to use platforms, secure platforms that people can utilise. What we feel is one of the most important things for Scotland to boost economic growth uh, is investing in rural areas. By investing in uh, broadband in these local areas we can attract more talent, we can attract more companies and we can drastically improve the delivery of education and learning within these schools within disparate regions within Scotland.